this problem or that problem. It's just held you back and held you back and you've been restricted and you've had this obstacle and that obstacle and this problem and this report from the doctor and this from the economy and this issue in the relationship and this issue with the job. Some of you, you feel like the enemy has pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back. But you know, whenever you declare Jesus as your Lord and you transfer your trust that God, God, you take a hold of the bow. God, you take a hold of the situation. When God takes a hold of it and releases you, whoo! Being your best with Trey Johnson. Hello, this is Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Being your best with Trey Johnson. My wife Heather and I, we are so grateful for your partnership, for your prayers as we go around the world sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with people. You know, that's what the gospel is. It is good news. It's good news to know that you and I can come into a relationship with Almighty God. It's good news to know that the blood of Jesus cleanses us and washes us clean. It is good news to know that Jesus took our sin and gave to us His righteousness. You know, when I think about the good news and the goodness of God, Romans 2, 4 says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. You know, for so many years, I stayed away from God because I didn't really realize how good God was. I didn't realize that God was for me. I, I, I thought that if I were to make a mistake that God was going to whack me or God was going to put me in a car wreck to teach me something or put sickness on me to teach me something, that, that it was God doing these things. And, it, and it's not God at all. When I finally did accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior and begin to pursue God for myself, I discovered that He's good and He's only good. Jesus said that I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, if you've joined us over the past several weeks, you know, you, you heard my wife's testimony, Heather, and we kind of talked about what that looked like. And last week, I, I taught on the life of God on the inside of us and how do we let this life dominate us and, and really what took place, that you and I, we were separated from God, but, but through Jesus, we come into relationship with God. And now we're a new creation, a new creature, a new species of being on the inside and how we begin to let that life dominate us. I know that this might shock you, but I haven't always known this. <laughs> you know, I didn't give my life to the Lord till I was 20 years old. My, my parents did a great job. I have a great mom, great dad, hard work, faithful. They took me to church and, you know, I, 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 I would go to uh, Wednesday night, the youth group from time to time. And, but I didn't really accept the Lord until I was in my 20s. When I, when I went to college, I kind of I didn't kind of, I did get caught up with the wrong crowd and was making wrong decisions and, and one bad decision leads to another bad decision and I ended up quitting college and I was living with a girl out of wedlock and if you're watching, I know in today's society that that's wrong. It, it, it's not okay to live with people outside of marriage, it, to have the best life, to have the life of God, experience the life of God. It's, it's for man and woman to come together in marriage and to become a new creature in Christ. Just like when you called upon the name of Jesus, you became a new creature. Well, when a man and a woman come, a man and a woman come together in holy matrimony, they become a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. The life of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, quickens, quickens that couple, makes them one, makes them new. And so anyway, I'd made wrong decisions. I, I was living with a girl outside of marriage, and you know, I was in the environment of the alcohol and the drugs. And, and I went home one weekend. During this time, my mom and dad said, you know, Trey, we love you. You're always welcome to come home, but we're not going to finance the decisions that you were making. And so I went home one weekend, and I never will forget it. I was going back to live with this girl in El Paso, Texas, where I was at. And my dad come running out the back door with tears running down his face. And he says, Trey, the Lord showed me that you're going to die unless you get your life right. 
And I was thinking, yeah, right, Dad, you know, whatever. I thought he was just trying to pull one over on me, you know, play the guilt trip of the parents or whatever. So I went back to living the lifestyle I was living. And just a couple of weeks later, I woke up in the middle of the night and the guy that I was roping with at the time was in the passenger seat and the girl I was living with at that time was in the back seat. And I woke up in the middle of the night running 70 down a four lane highway. There's two lanes going this way, two lanes coming this way. And I woke up and I was running 70 down the bar ditch. And when I woke up, I tried to ease the truck and horse trailer back onto the highway, but I realized I wasn't going to make it because there's a big water culvert up ahead of me and it had the concrete slabs going up both sides. And so I pulled the truck back over and I hit it perfectly with the truck, but the trailer hit it right on. And so when the, when the truck jumped, it ripped the trailer apart from the truck. And as I'm spinning around, if you've ever been in a wreck, you know how stuff goes in slow motion. And I'm spinning around, and I'm watching in slow motion this horse trailer just flipping end over end over end. And then when we came to a standstill over here, in the truck and I realized that I wasn't dead and the people I was with wasn't dead and the truck was just total, it was just a, a mess. I got out and I just took off running towards the horse trailer. When I got over there, the horse trailer was just a ball of tin and you could hear the horses pawing and they're trying to get out and we couldn't get any of the doors open. And so finally, I found a, a window that was open. And so I crawled through the window and I'm, I kneeled down. I never will forget this. I kneeled down in the trailer and I'm petting on the horses, trying to calm them down. There's blood all over the inside of this horse trailer while we're waiting for the jaws of life to come and cut one side of the trailer open to get the horses out. And I remember my dad. Remember the tears running down his face and him saying, Trey, the Lord show me that you're going to die if you don't get your life right. In that upside down horse trailer that night, thank God my parents took me to church enough that I knew that I needed to call upon the name of Jesus. And in that horse trailer, I asked Jesus to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Now, my life just didn't miraculously change from after that night, but there was something different. The life of God had entered me, and, and I know you're probably wondering, what happened to the horses? Well, finally the jaws of life came, and one of them, it stripped its leg down to the bone, and it wasn't able to compete anymore, but the other two, they finally healed after several months. We was able to use them again. But that night, I made a decision that I was going to change my life forever. I remember telling the Lord, Lord, I don't, I don't want to know this religious idea of God. I, I want to know you. I want to know the same God that was in the Bible. I want to know the same God that showed up for David and Noah and Moses. All these stories that I'd heard, God, I knew inside of here the life of God had entered me. And I knew that there was more than just going to church. I knew there was more than just being religious. But I went back to that same environment but in that same environment, there were still the drugs, there was still the alcohol, there was still the women, there was still all this type of stuff around, but I had a desire to change. And I found Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. And I needed everything else added unto me. During that time, I, I made a decision. If I saw it in God's Word, I was just going to do it. So He said, Seek Him first. So every morning, I'd get up, and I'd just start seeking Him first. Now, at this time, I was still addicted to this, addicted to that, and addicted to this. I still thought the way that I used to think, but there was something changed on the inside of me. The life of God had entered me. So I'd put him first and put him first and put him first. And, and not too long after that, I was down at a, at a rodeo, went with some friends of mine. I wasn't good enough at this time to be in the rodeo, but I just had a desire when I got saved. I wanted to, I wanted to be at the top of the game. I want to be the best, one of the best ropers in the world. I wanted to be at the top. I just, I just had a desire to change, and, and I'm putting God first. And I never forget, I'm sitting down on a fence, and I'm watching this rodeo. Remember, I wasn't good enough to be in the rodeo at this time. At that level, it was like an open rodeo. And two of my heroes were in the rodeo. They didn't know who I was, but of course I knew who they were. And I'm watching them, you know, watch them rope and everything. They rope, and I'm sitting on the fence. Out of all the people at this rodeo, they ride over to me. And they said, hey, young man, we need to be in Oklahoma City at 8 o'clock in the morning. Would you drive, help us drive and get there? And I was thinking, are these guys nuts? They don't even know who I am, you know. And they're asking me, and I was like, yeah, no brainer. You know, I'd figure out how to get all my stuff later. So I jumped in the rig with them that night. And I began to tell them my story. 
I just given my life to the Lord and I just wanted to change and I, you know and one of them says why don't you come move to Lano Texas and work for me so I was like man this is just awesome no brainer and remember I'm putting God first I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness he promised everything else to be added I had no idea I would be doing what I'm doing today I had no idea I'd be reaching the world with the gospel I had no idea a certain things would be taking place but I was just putting him first I was putting him first I was putting him first and he began to orchestrate things and change things. Remember, his plan for your life is good. And, and so I went back to El Paso and I got my stuff and I moved out, moved to Lano and began to work for him. He told me I was like living with the Pope. You know, he, he wasn't saved at the time. And, but I just wanted to change and grow. And, and so I worked for this guy. And just a few months after this, the people that I lived with in El Paso, the FBI came in and busted this family with four and a half tons of drugs. If you're not very good with math, that is a lot of drugs. Some of them, they got life in prison. Some have died in prison. Uh, I, I'll never forget one of the guys. He's in heaven now, thank the Lord. At the time, he wasn't. He was one of them that got busted hauling the drugs. and uh, He was in prison there in Mississippi. And so I was at a roping in Mississippi. I just started getting my life back and everything. I'll never forget it. And I was just hungry. I wanted to know, make sure that he would go to heaven and not hell. And so I go to the prison that day, and there's two of them uh, that, I, I, that was in there at the same prison. And I was begin to, to share with them, ask them, you know, you know why, why did you do this? And, you know, if you were to die, do you know if you're going to go to heaven? And, and they didn't know. And, and so I got to lead them to the Lord. I know you're getting a lot out of today's teaching. I, I know that every time I open up God's Word and I'm hearing what God is saying, it just stirs me. It, it does something on the inside of me, and I know it's doing something on the inside of you. You know, as Heather and I travel around the country, and as the show continues to go around the world, we want you to pray about becoming a partner to this ministry. Every person that's saved, healed, delivered, you're a part of that. You know, Paul had partners as he went around and he started different works in different churches. And, and the Bible talks about the power of partnership and how the same grace that's on us is the same grace that's on you. And, and there's just such a connection. We can't do it by ourselves. You can't maybe go where we go and we couldn't go without you. So, so go to TreyJohnsonMinistries.com and pray about becoming a partner. There's a way to give on there. You can text to give. You can give online. You can mail us a check. We also, we have a, a new magazine out. We want to encourage you to, to let us know you'd like the new magazine, Winning Ways. It's Heather and I and what's going on around the world through the ministry, roping, leadership, all the different things that we're a part of. And, and while you're there, we want you to check out the product, not only today's teaching, and, but there's so many hours worth of teaching to help you grow in your faith. You know, you can go to our podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel, all the social media avenues. If you're serious about your walk with God and you really want to go to the next level, we have more content than you can probably consume and we're going to keep producing because we want you to know God and we want you to be your best. Now, I want you to, to, to picture this because the devil's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And just how we have angels that have charge over us to protect us and guide us, Satan has demonic spirits assigned to take us out. And so I'm leaving the prison, just led these guys to the Lord that I'd lived with for several years. They're in life for prison. Led them to the Lord, and I'm pulling out. I leave the prison, I'm pulling out. And boom, this car hits me, comes out of nowhere. This big truck was pulling in. I couldn't see. Went to pull across the road. Boom, this car hits me just running. This whatever the speed limit was, 55, 60 at that intersection, whatever. And it hits the tire of my truck and bounces off. No scrape. I mean, of course, it just shot me sideways and everything like that. But nothing happened to me. Got to lead the guy to the Lord, went on to the roping. I don't know what happened at the roping, if I did good or if I didn't do good, but I got to lead those people to the Lord. 
So as I'm putting him first, God begins to put this desire. I'm working at my rope and I'm working at being, you know, one of the top guys. And I want to go back to college. So I go back to college and I'm going to Texas Tech and, and I would go to class and then I'd go up into the library and they'd have these little cubicles. And I, I found this scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. It says, My son, pay attention to my word. Incline your ears unto my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For those who find his word, they find life and its health and healing to all your flesh. And it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. But I, I found this one translation that said, my son, be addicted to my word. Now, I knew what being addicted was like. I knew what it was like when I was, you know, crawling through the bar ditch, trying to find the, the snuff or the smokes or the whatever it was, you know, I addict what I would do to, to get a, a fix and stuff. What you, and so I started doing that to God's word that I tried to overdose, literally tried to overdose on God's word. And you know what the side effects for overdosing in God's Word was? I started getting free. The next thing I know, I wasn't addicted to this and I wasn't addicted to that. There was no headaches. There was no addiction. There was freedom, life, life more abundantly. So I go back to college and, and I'm still, you know, I'm going to school and I'd go up into these cubicles and I'd shut the door and I would just, I'd find God's Word and I would read God's Word and I was so hungry for God's Word. See, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Remember, I'm putting him first, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and I'm getting better at my roping and I'm starting to discover, okay, God has some things for me to do and I just love God and I want to share God with people. And so I go to this roping in Pecos, Texas. I'll never forget, I'm in, in this process probably a couple of years. I'm letting the life of God dominate me. I'm changing the way that I think and I'm going forward and I'm getting better and I'm at this roping and a bunch of my buddies come up to me and they say, hey, Trey, would you do church for us in the morning? And at first I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do church for you, you know. When I left that evening, I got to thinking, I, they, I knew they were strung out when they asked me to do church. They were just making fun of me like they'd been waiting for me to fall, you know, back into the old way of doing things. But I hadn't over a couple of years. They'd seen a change in my life. And, and so I didn't show up because I thought they were just making fun of me. And finally, when I got to the rope and later, every one of them came up to me and they said, Trey, where were you? We showed up for church and you didn't. And it crushed me. I'll never forget, I can still see I'm at Pecos, Texas, and I pull in the parking lot, and I just put the truck in neutral, and I just break down just crying because I had a chance to share with my buddies that I used to live like hell with, had a chance to share with them the goodness of God, and I didn't show up. And so I told the Lord, if I ever get a chance to share your goodness with people, I'll never tell you no. I got myself together and I drove back to college, you know, and, and a couple of weeks later I'm at Big Springs, Texas at the college rodeo and I go up to the announcer stand to see who's doing church because I didn't care if it was Catholic, Presbyterian, Church of God, Pentecostal, it didn't matter. I was just hungry for the things of God. And they said, nobody's doing church, Trey. Would you do it? And at first I said, no, I won't do it. And then I remembered what I told God. So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So I asked a friend of mine uh, to, if he would do music, and I'd do my testimony. Well, there was tons of people that showed up that day because they knew the old Trey, and then they had seen the, the transformation in me, and I shared my testimony for the first time. And the second time that I shared my testimony, somebody you know, at Texas Tech heard about my testimony. I get up, and there's thousands of people that I'm speaking to. I mean, shaking in my boots. I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to say yes to God. And when I got up there, the Lord just spoke in my heart, and I just knew that, Trey, you're going to reach a lot of people. Now, during that time, I keep putting God first. I keep getting putting God first. And we started doing church services at all the college rodeos and stuff. And we'd go to this college, and we'd go to that college, and we'd have Bible study, and, <clears throat> and it would grow. And there would be hundreds of kids that would show up at the college rodeos at these church services because they saw what the life of God had done. And... Before I gave my life to the Lord, there might be six or eight people in the stands, and I would kind of sneak around, you know, and go past it. But now, it was awesome. There, there were so many people accept the Lord. Some are in the ministry. I got to do some of their weddings. I mean, just a, this the story goes on and on. Well, well, then I start getting better and better, and I make the college national finals. I was the only person from Texas Tech to make the college finals my junior and senior year. And then uh, I, I was practicing. I wanted to be at the top, and this world champion calls me and says, Hey, Trey, I want to rodeo with you in the professional. And I was like, Oh, man, yeah, you're, are you kidding me? Is this? I thought it was one of my friends jacking with me. You know, remember, I'm putting him first. I'm putting him first. I'm doing what I know to do in the natural. 
God's putting my life together. He's connecting me with the right people because of putting Him first. There's power in putting God first. There's a reason why He says, Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And whenever you do this, then the Word of God's going to come alive. So I start to rodeo professionally, and then I win the Rookie of the Year in the Professional Rodeo in 2000. I had won the most money as a, you know, my first year in the Professional League. And, I, and, and right after that, I was in uh, Salinas, California. Won the Rookie of the Year. The next step is I'm going to win the World Championship. You know, I'm just climbing the ladder. The sponsors are coming in. The endorsements are coming in. I'm getting the best of the best partners. And I was at this rope and the year after that. And, I was reading, spending time with God, remember putting Him first. <laughs> and I open up Proverbs chapter 23 and the first few verses there. And it says, A man driven by his desire in a negative way is like sticking a knife to his throat. And I knew what God was saying to me. He says, Trey, if you don't get a hold of this desire to rope and stuff, it's going to be like sticking a knife to your throat. So I went to the rope in that day and you could only have three partners and I had three of the very best. I went and told them all, I'm not roping today. And I made myself sit and watch one of the best ropings in the country. And I watched that day. And that day it broke. From that day forward, roping never owned me again. And fast forward to this, a few months later, I'm in Salinas, California. And I'm putting him first. Remember, I'm putting him first. Putting, putting first. Just, just do what the Word says. Putting first. And I had like this open eye vision. And it's Jesus, he's sitting across the table from me and, and he's putting pieces of bread in my mouth and, and, and he'd give me another piece of bread and I'd chew it and he'd give me another piece of bread and I'd chew it. And, and, and then one time he stood up and out of respect and honor for the Lord, I stood up and, and he kind of stepped around the table and I stepped around the table and he put another piece of bread in my mouth and then he patted me on the back and he says, now Trey, go feed my sheep. And I struggled. I don't know if you've ever argued with God, but I was arguing with God. God, I've worked so hard to get here. And, you know, the next step is a world championship and to be at the top and, and to do all this type of stuff. So I went home and at this time, the you know, the lady I was married to at the time, you know, she is, well, yeah, whatever, you know, just doing whatever. So I'm seeking the Lord and I'm fasting, I'm praying. And, and this pastor from a church in Amarillo, Texas, he contacts me, says, hey, Trey, would you come into my office and everything? Didn't know anything about rodeoing. He says, would you pray about coming on staff and becoming an associate pastor of this church? And on the inside, I knew, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. But on the outside, I was screaming. You know, my head was screaming. I'd worked to be at the top of the game and had the sponsors coming in. And I'd been in the ministry and traveled all over the place and had all this going. And, and But I felt like my roping, the... The rookie of the year, it was my Abraham. It was my Abraham and Isaac moment when, when Abraham offered Isaac up to God. And, and God, when he went to lift up the knife, the angel stopped him and says, Abraham, stop. And he found the, the ram caught in the, the, the bushes there in the thicket. And, and that God became Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees and provide. And then God says, now, Abraham, because of what you were willing to do, I know that I can trust you to do whatever I ask you to do. And that was my Isaac. I, I put my rope up on the altar and I, I started, I, I took horses and stuff. I found where Solomon, when he was age 27 and he was becoming the next king after his father David, he gave sacrificial offerings. And, and when he gave these sacrificial offerings, uh, God showed up and he says, to ask me whatever you want. And Solomon says, I, I, I want wisdom, how to lead your people coming in and lead your people going out. Well, I didn't have the gold and silver that Solomon had, but... I did have my horses. I did have saddles. I did have trailer. I did have these things. And I went around and I loaded up my horse trailer and I started giving my horses that were worth a lot of money at this time. I started sowing them as gifts, believing God for wisdom to lead His people coming in and going out. And when God reminds me of those seeds, I still draw up on those seeds to lead His people coming in and going out. So I, I laid my rope and down. Got rid of trucks, trailers, horses, saddles. And I said, God, if you ever have me to rope again, then it's going to be totally you. And so I went on staff at that church and then pastored there for a while, then went to Colorado, started a church, then went to Midland, Texas and started a church. And, and then in about 2010, by this time I had two kids and, and been married for 10 years. And, and during, during this time, I remember I was putting him first. I just wanted to know God. I just want to please him. Same as my heart today. 
In 2010, the Lord started talking to me about traveling and ministering again. I've been pastoring for almost nine years now and, 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 and roping again. And Lord, you know, these guys competed at the top level and they haven't taken nine years off. And, and, but the Lord started showing me glimpses of people's eternal destiny and how important it was for me to begin to travel and minister again. And remember, I didn't know I'd be doing what I'd be doing today. And so I got the churches in place. I was overseeing three of them at the time. I got them in place. Went back out on the road ministering, moved the lady I was married to at the time and the kids close to her family. Well, during this time, you know, I didn't, didn't really realize it in the natural. I knew in here that things weren't right. She had an affair on me. And uh, next thing I know, I'm going to do a, a rodeo Bible camp. Isaiah 41.10 kept coming to me. A lady texted me from one part of the country. Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not lose focus, for I am your God. I will help you, strengthen. I will uphold you, the victorious, uh, my victorious right hand. A guy that didn't even know this person texted me the same scripture the same day. Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not lose focus, for I am your God. I will help you, strengthen. I will uphold you, my victorious right hand. I was thinking, oh, okay, God, yeah, that's great. You know, <laughs> I didn't know that you know, all hell was fixing to break loose. And so I'm teaching team roping at this clinic here in this school. And I'm talking to this guy in front of me. And a guy walks up behind me on his horse and gets off his horse and just leaves his horse standing behind me. And the guy's rope falls off onto the ground. And I step back and I step right in the loop. And for some reason, this horse, remember, the devil's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I come to give you life, life more abundantly. I step in this rope. The horse spooks and takes off running with the rope around my leg. Boom! I mean, it's like a shotgun went off. This horse jerks and takes off running. And I just yell, angels, do your job! And this horse just stops from a dead run in the middle of the arena. And the rope just comes off the saddle horn. Blew my knee out. So I'm limping. I go back. As soon as I get back, the lady that I've been married to 10 years tells me she doesn't want to be married anymore. Had an affair, all that type of stuff. My 10-year anniversary, actually. Remember, fear not, for I'm with you. Do not lose focus, for I'm your God. I will help you, strengthen you. I'll uphold you my victorious right hand. Go through the divorce. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what's happening, Lord? You know, I'm supposed to have all this stuff, and I'm supposed to be doing your will. Remember in, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, whenever David was doing what God told him to do, and they come back, and the enemy had taken out the wife and the kids and everything, and all the men wanted to stone David, and David had to stir himself up and encourage himself in the Lord. Well, that's what I was having to do. I went from, I did good on some real estate deals, didn't have any money at this time. Now I'm living in a barn. Had a truck, two-horse trailer, two horses, living in a barn. Didn't know how I was going to take care of my kids. Didn't have, you know, I'd been probably, I don't know, eight to ten months. I'd been from pastor, went back traveling, ministered, rodeo and everything again. And the Lord, I, I never forget, I was so afraid and I was asleep and I woke up and it was like the Lord was sitting on my bed. And he says, Trey, you need to know I'm committed to you. When he said that, I'm committed to you. I just knew in my spirit, it just everything was going to be okay. And of course, I cried and just peace of God come all over me. And I stay in focus. Remember, fear not, for I'm with you. Do not lose focus, for I'm your God. I will help you, strengthen you, uphold you, my victorious right hand. He says, Trey, my plan for you hasn't changed just because somebody else changed. And so I began to get healing in my heart and begin to stay focused on God, keep doing what God has told me. And of course, nice religious people tell me I'd never preach again. They tell me I couldn't get married again. I mean, who needs the devil when you got good religious people, you know? <laughs> and so I just stayed focused on God. I knew His plan for me hadn't changed. Would you do the same thing right now? Maybe you're just at your home, or maybe you're listening to this going down the road, or maybe you're watching this on the YouTube channel, or maybe you're in a hotel or whatever it is. It's very simple. The Bible says when we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and we declare with our mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord. He says at that time, you're saved, you receive the life of God, and you can settle that you're going to spend eternity with God. Would you pray with me out loud right where you're at? Would you just say, Father God, today is the day that I make the decision to believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and I declare with my mouth, and I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and according to your word, I'm forgiven, I'm now in the family of God, and I can be certain that I'll spend eternity with Almighty God. 
Now, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time in your life, we want you to contact us. Go to the website. Look at all the teachings that we have. Get in touch with us. We can send you one of our magazines. You can go to the YouTube channel. You know, we write daily devotionals. There's so many things that we offer to add value to your life. My name is Trey Johnson. Thank you for watching. Be in your best. Let somebody know about our show. And I look forward to seeing you again next week.